morning. It is about 6 a.m. here in Calgary. It's Saturday morning. My voice is still waking up a little bit, but I am so glad to be sharing a little bit of my practice with you. So what we're going to do today, or at least what I'm going to do today, you can join along if you like, but I'm going to use this roller here for a couple of things, and I'm also going to use this yoga wheel. Now I know if you're watching, you might not have one of these. It's not essential. I'm just going to do a little bit of backbending, and then I will show you a little bit about how I use this. This is something that we just made out of some um, water pipe and an old mat. You can actually buy these yoga wheels online if you want to. Um, and then I'm also going to use um, a long strap, okay? So here we go. You ready to rock and roll? If you don't have a roller, don't worry, okay? I'll, um, I'll share with you a bunch of different ways that you can play, all right? So today we're going to start, or I'm going to start, on hands and knees. And I, I, if you've been following this at all, one thing I love to talk about is this center part of my palm. Um, because when I'm actually working one-on-one -on -one with people, and I hope I really get to touch more people in the future, is I like to think of my hands as an extension of my heart. And so that when I'm putting my hands on someone, or when I'm putting my hands, in this case, on the floor, I can feel my heart on the floor. So it just kind of connects my center out through my periphery. And, and then same way when I'm touching my kids, it's the same thing. When I put my hands on my kids, it's, it's I feel my heart touching them, right? And, um, and let me tell you, before I get going, let me tell you one thing. Those little three-year-olds totally feel me, right? And so one of the reasons I'm doing these the, I'm, I'm sharing my practice with you is because I fundamentally believe we can get through this a lot stronger with gracefulness and gentleness and come out the other side in just a really transformed way. Maybe I'm optimistic and Pollyanna, but I just don't, I just really believe that. And so my kids, they are the ones who feel me. They're my barometer, right? So when they start going a little rangy, I check in with my own brain and my heart. <laughs> and typically I'm a little disconnected in those times. So, um, I will, I'll stop that. Let's get practicing. Okay, so my hands are on the floor. The palm of my hand, it's like my heart touching the floor. I'm not like suction cupping my hand in or doing any cupcake hands or doing anything goofy with my fingers. I'm just placing my hands. Now, if you're someone who's got wrists that are a little funky, then we really should be talking about your shoulders. And you know something? I'll do that on another clip. I'll talk about shoulders. But if you're here, you know what I'd rather have you do? I'd rather you not come onto your fists. I mean, you could. You probably know how to do that. I want you to start just thinking about some shoulder rolls, okay? And then I want you to play around doing this. Like, usually wrists have a strong correlation of what's going on or not going on in your shoulder group, okay? So I'll leave you that as an option. So we're just going to be here. Feel your hands on the mat, and then you're going to slowly come into, into this position, okay? And how I want you to play with this motion is it's fun kind of watching myself on the screen to see if my words are actually matching what my movement is. <laughs> the classic dilemma of a yoga teacher, right? Okay, so the pelvis, I want you to think pelvis first, and I want you to move, do your best to move your pelvis first, and then work up each individual vertebrae. Now, it's obviously not going to be one at a time, but I want you, instead of just kind of dropping down like this, I want you to actually be mindful about how you're moving your body and then move that pelvis. Move the pelvis. So the pelvis moves on the leg bones. So this is the articulating joint, this is the articulating joint, and then obviously each of these points here are articulating joints. And then come in the other way. Now if we add the breath, the breath is going to be exhaling this way. Sorry, inhaling. And then exhaling this way. So as we go into the extension, it's an inhale, and as we come into this flexion, it's an exhale. So this is the inhale bit. Now really do your best to have your head come at the end. Yeah? Okay, now we're going to keep the hips up, more or less, and then hands are going to reach out, like so, okay? Like this.
and then bring your arms out like so. So keep those hips coming back. And feel those hands. Remember I was talking about the hands and the heart? See if you can feel the center of your hand as, the, as your heart. Okay. And then come and grab your strap. So here's something I've absolutely started to commit to. I can't watch any media after five. <laughs> A couple nights ago, I didn't sleep so well. And it wasn't that my mind was ruminating. I wasn't kind of in that place. It's just not good. <laughs> so I have a moratorium now on... Like, I, I watch, I have certain people that I'm following right now um, who have a, a similar viewpoint as I do that we can come out of this better than we are, than we came into it. So, I, so I'm following them because there's an agreement there with my belief. And honestly, I really couldn't care less whether people go outside or go to places or not go to places because I have no control over what other people, how they behave. And if I get myself wrapped up into that conversation, that just doesn't help anybody. It doesn't help me, it doesn't help them, it doesn't help my kids, it just doesn't work. So I don't participate in that stuff, just so you know. And it's not that I don't care, it's just I can't control it. All I, all I know is what I can control is what's up in here and what's in here. So there's, there's some really, like there's lots of people online who, like Jack Fan Canfield, I don't know if you know him. He's the guy, one of the guys who did Chicken Soup for the Soul. And um, he, uh, I've done a little bit of work with him, and um, I like, he just did a webinar the other day. He did something really cool. Just, it was a really great hour or so. So I, I kind of follow him a little bit. And, um, and he's got the free webinar on his Facebook page that you can go check out. But that's what I tend to do. So I have my teaching, I have this that I'm sharing with you guys, and just keep following along as I'm talking. And, and so I pay attention to that because that's where I want my intention and my brain to go because before this, we all know that intention, right? Like through the decades, people have said what you think about, you bring about, right? Like absolutely. And lots of people have said that for decades. You can go back to business leaders and thinkers and all that from like way back in the day, like decades and decades ago. So I'm sort of following that philosophy because that's sort of a, a true truism, Yeah. Well, I'm stuck here at home. <laughs> Baking cookies. That's what I did yesterday. Bake cookies. I made a new webinar. So we've got a new webinar coming next Wednesday on Facebook ads for yoga teachers. So stay tuned for that. You should probably see an ad down your feed about that if you're a yoga teacher. And if you're not a yoga teacher, you can absolutely sign up for it. I'm interviewing two of the best people in the business on how to use Facebook ads and not do it like, not lose money, because that's the last thing we all need to be doing right now. The stock market's doing that for us. And the COVID actually overall is doing that for us. So how do you use it to help grow and expand your message? Now what am I doing here? I'm holding the strap and I'm pressing, I'm pulling the strap wide, and then I'm taking the strap in behind my head. So only go to as far as there's no elbow strain or shoulder strain, okay? And then come back up again. So slight pull and then bring it back. So that's what I did yesterday. So I set that up. I set up with this webinar that we're going to run on Wednesday at 3 p.m. And if you happen to be watching this video after Wednesday at 3 p.m., don't worry, we'll have the link available for people. And then I make cookies. All right, lovely. Okay, now come back to this. Let's move these shoulders. So we're gonna bring the shoulders up to the ears, and then we're gonna pull the shoulder blades back. So we're pulling the blades. Like even though you can see it's my shoulders that are coming back, I want you to think about this, the, the, the meat between your blades and the spine. So you're gonna reach, think about bringing the shoulder blades back. Now typically what people will do is they'll try and pull this back to make it happen. I want you to think more, just truly think about your blades. The blades are pulling back. Yeah, blades are pulling back. And these guys are coming along for the ride, right? So I don't want you to think about, I mean, you can't think about it, but I don't want you to really think about opening your chest. Moving the blades back doesn't really open the chest. You need a scalpel to open your chest. 
What I want you to think about is just those blades coming back to your spine. Okay, so now you're going to come up, the blades are going to come back to your spine, and then you're going to drop it down. And then up, and then pull it back, and then drop it down. So we'll add the breath, so the breath's going to come in, and then the breath's going to go out. The breath's going to come in, and then the breath is going to come out. The breath is in, good, and the breath is out. Okay, now we're going to come back onto our hands. And I know those of you who have wrist pain are going to be like, Susie, don't do that. One more time, okay? And I want, if you've got the wrist pain, I want you to stay up there doing these shoulder things like so, okay? And so over here, for those of you who are good with your wrists, and now we're going to come back to this motion here. And in fact, actually, those of you who ha do have wrist issues, maybe try this after doing a little bit of shoulder stuff. You may have found that your wrists can actually now do this. And if they can, that will give you some information about how your shoulders are related to your wrists, right? And there's such a strong correlation between them, between those shoulders and wrists. Okay, good, perfect. All right, now let's come back into this one. So we're gonna take this arm here and then we're gonna bring that arm across, okay? And then we're gonna move that arm. So this one, the articulating joint is the shoulder, right? So I am put my hands just here and now I'm just moving that arm into rotation, just like that. Okay, and then we're gonna bring this across. Now, if you, if you have the ability, we're going to do this. We're going to do eagle, okay? And then if you can, right? So, again, like, for all the times in, in our life, don't overdo stuff. <laughs> there's, a, there's enough challenge based on this little invisible critter that's upending everybody's life. We don't actually need to, like, push ourselves into injury because no one out there can help us. <laughs> Physio clinics are closed, the hospitals are overrun. Don't hurt yourself. Like, don't hurt yourself in yoga, <laughs> okay? Maybe I shouldn't be laughing about this, but I got no other choice. That's it. That's all we can do. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, and then arms come up. So now, as my arms come up, this, the articulating joint is still my shoulders, right? It's still this point here. So that's the movement coming up, yeah? So if you don't have movement, don't do this, yeah? Because you'll think you're doing shoulder movement, but look, I'm not doing shoulder movement here. I'm, my shoulder is staying right at the same spot, so it's kind of silly to do this, right? So let's just do this. If you don't have that movement, then just go, oh look, I don't have that movement. Like just be realistic and say, oh look, my shoulders aren't moving. And maybe your shoulders moved two or three or five weeks ago and now they're not and you can blame the little critter out there the invisible little critter and then that's great and then go look my shoulder's not moving and just be in the reality of the physical the physical reality of what your body can do right now don't try and push it beyond the wall there's no need to okay and then come back good and then here so again that articulating joint is that shoulder so it's not this yeah, maybe that's what I'll just call COVID, the invisible little critter, <laughs> the invisible little critter. Someone needs to start. Maybe if you guys know of anyone who's doing cartoons on the invisible little critter, maybe the, maybe our world's not ready for humor, but if there's somebody who's got something, can you send them to me? <laughs> I'd like to see some funny things. Funny, not, not like mean, funny. Funny stuff. I heard one person say, this This might not land very well, but you can tell where my state of mind is right now. Um, she said, do you know what? Our ancestors toiled and toiled and toiled not to give us a vacation. What they gave us is the opportunity to be born and to die, and whatever happens in between those spots is whatever happens. I thought that was sort of like, a bit, a bit of tough love, but 
sort of interesting. Okay, so now you're going to take the hand over here and then you're going to side bend. And then this arm is going to come up only if you can. So if you have to be here, then be here. Or if you're here, you're here. Or you can be here, or you can be here. Okay? So just pay attention. We're like, the thing is, is that your body's a barometer, right? So if you just push through it, it's not going to be able to help you with all the other stuff you want to do. So you decide. Okay? And then over here. So I think as I'm going along with this practice, you're probably noticing I don't have a piece of paper in front of me. I don't have like a planned sequence for you. I had an idea of what I wanted to play with. But I think what I'll do, I'm going to come back onto the floor. We'll do some back bending. And then we're going to finish in standing. So I'm not going to do an official Shavasana at the end of this. I don't often, for these videos, I don't often do that anyway. Um, but um, I think I will do a bunch of stuff on the floor and then we'll come up into standing and we'll finish in standing. So if you've got a roller, then we're going to use a roller. If you don't have a roller, you don't need to use one, right? But the, the, I'll show, I'll demonstrate this without the roller first. So you're, you're on your hands and knees and this hand here is going to come in behind. So it's in behind. And then you're just going to slide it along the floor. Okay? And you're just going to move into rotation. Now do your best. Don't, like, I don't want you to come down to here. What I want, the reason being is, the focus point here is that we're going to twist. So if you just drop yourself down to the floor, there's not really a twist. You just kind of use this, this became the articulating joint, and this became the articulating joint, and a little bit of a back bend became the articulating joint. I want you to think about actually taking a twist. You see that difference? This versus this, yeah? Or let me, let me do that again. This versus that, right? There's not a whole lot of twist in the ladder. Now, how you use the roller is, so the roller's a bit off screen here. So, how you use the roller, so hands on the roller, and then you just roll out this way. And so you'll see that my pelvis is staying more or less the same. And you've probably heard me say before that twists are about the obliques. Really, the engine are the obliques. So when we actually use the obliques and only move the body as far as it can actually go, and we don't use the arms to pull ourselves around, we can actually improve SI joint and lumbar and all sorts of other stuff that twists are actually known for hurting. Because a lot of people, you'll hear me say this all the time if you watch me, is that a lot of people, what they do twists is they pull and they use their arms as the leverage point, but they've lost contact with their area here. And so then that's when we can create problems, right? So I'll turn this way to do the other side. And then people say, it's such crap that twists don't help digestion. Well, it's because they're not actually moving the abdomen very well. Twists can be really interesting for mild digestive stuff, not like, I wouldn't say Crohn's or celiac or like those types of stuff, but mild digestive like constipation, just gut stuff feeling icky. Board bends and twists can be very, very helpful just because of the pressure they put on. If you've ever been in a gross anatomy lab, it's very interesting to see how close all the organs to the muscle tissue, it, like how packed in it is. It's really kind of interesting. Anyway, it's just food for thought. Okay. Lovely. All right, now, I'm going to come back to the strap. And I talked my way through the last one. I wasn't a very good teacher on that last time I did it. So here, we're going to do this, and I'm going to actually teach this to you. So the arms are up overhead, and we're going to gently pull the strap wide, and then we're going to bring that behind, right? And so now the thing is, is you have to do this to do this. Don't do that. Only bring the arm back like this. Because what, what's, what's happening here is this is the articulated joint, so is the, the elbow is a little bit too. So if you don't have the ability to have the arm in this position, then this movement is not going to work for you when you get down to this part, right? Because you're coming in behind your head, right? So you, you don't want to do this. You don't want to do this. Right? And so only come down as far as, if your arms are out here, only come down as far as. So you might be here. Let me show you this way. You might be here, so then come down here. That's fine. Don't come all the way down. Just, just be about here, okay? So now if you are here, now we're going to pull the strap a little tauter, 
and then you're going to notice a little bit of shaking. I got this movement, actually, you know who I learned this from? From Eric Schiffman's book. I think he only has one book. Something about, what is that name? What is the name of Eric Schiffman's book? It was like, it was one of my first yoga books I ever, ever bought. Moving into stillness or something like that? Anyway, that man, that man's awesome. Don't know where he is or what he's up to, but he was an awesome dude. Eric Schiffman. S-C-H-I-F-F-M-A-N. Okay. And just so you know, with my ears, I heard some little kids wake up. So you might hear, I'm just underneath the kitchen, so you might hear a, a little, a set, two sets of little three-year-olds shortly. Okay, good. Little bridge, or just bridge. Okay, we're gonna be here. Now, little thing about bridge poses that's, that's I think is important is when I do bridge, the movement here, here's the, the one of the major articulated joints of the hips. So we're gonna lift the hips up into extension. So sometimes what, I, what sometimes what I say to people is notice where your gluteal fold is, where your bum meets your legs. And then from there, lift from there. So here's the gluteal fold. I want you to think about lifting from there. And then here's my pelvis and here are my ribs, right? So if I'm here, here's my pelvis, here are my ribs. I want these two to stay connected. So what I, I don't tend to advocate is start to go into a tuck first and then lift. Because my spine's gonna move into extension anyway, right? So if I'm doing this, it's gonna have to come away from that anyway. So I'm not lengthening my spine or protecting anything. But what I can do is just move from here. Now what you might need for some support is you might need some blocks, right? So you can put some blocks between your legs and then lift like that. That might be helpful. Some of you are going to hate that, but some of you might like that. That will be the thing that you support. Or you can take a strap and you can bring a strap around your legs and then gently, gently, gently press out into the strap. That might give you the stability that you need that's actually going to provide you with better mechanics. Maybe I'll do a, a class just on that, but for now, here we go. We'll go up like this, and then down like this, okay? Now, the other articulated joint, hopefully, is around your shoulder. Lots of people who are limited up in here will end up doing this. Watch where my hands are. They'll do that, right? That's a really, really common movement. So I want you to think, think about this. Think about coming around your shoulder joint here. Now, some of you, if you are tight through here, you're not going to be able to do that. That's fine. So just come up as, as wherever you can. Okay, so that's kind of the, the little bits about it. Now think about the center of your heel, the ball of your foot, and the base of your pinky toe. Let me say that again. I sort of rushed that. Ball of your foot, base of your pinky toe, center of your heel. Feel that, and then, and I, and I don't tend to push the feet down to lift up because my feet aren't causing my hips to move. The primary mover here, the articulating joint, is your hip, not your feet. Right? It's that. Now, with my dad, when my dad was, um, was alive, in the last sort of few months of his life that we didn't realize it was the last few months of his life, he was still very healthy and well, but he was having trouble standing up from sitting. And so I would say to him, push your feet into the floor to lift up. Because he, was, he, had, he had lost a lot of his like, mechanical advantage, right? And so in that case, that would work. But if you are generally a pretty nimble person, and you're just learning, you're relearning your biomechanics, then really think about where you're coming from here as opposed to pushing your feet down to lift up. I hope that makes sense. Okay. And you'll see I'm not like taking my hands under because right now it's like, it's not even 7 a.m. for me. And so I'm not really interested in going there yet for the day. Okay, so now... I'm going to pull out this little yoga wheel. Now, what I just said is that I wasn't interested in throwing my arms down because it's so early. And you'll notice that I'm not going to move my full distance when I do this. So this yoga wheel, um, if you're just joining me, we made this out of old water pipe that we found from a friend of ours construction site. And then this is an old yoga mat wrapped around it. And now I'm going to do the same thing, right? Okay, so I'm going to hold this roller. Just I'm holding it for your sake so that I don't move too fast. So I'm here. And watch what I'm doing. My hips lift. 
right? So it's still the same motion. My hips and my ribs are connected, and then my head drops back because of what my hips, what my hips did, right? So the, the driver is my hips, okay? So now from here, let me just get myself more center on this. Okay, so now I'm here, and then I'm just going to gently roll this way, and then back. Roll this way, and then back. So I'm only, I'm moving in a range where my head and my neck is in the same position. If I go too far, then my head's going to go into too much. My neck's going to go too much into extension. So I'm paying attention to my neck, and I'm paying attention to anything that's going on around here. And I want to stay, keep my feet connected to the floor without pressing really hard. Okay? Now... You probably didn't have one of those, so in that case, I hope you just did bridge, okay? All right, so now, I'm feeling a little more awake now. I'm going to come up into standing. Okay, so now in standing, here we are. Feel the center of the heel, the ball of the foot, and the base of the pinky toe, yeah? Uh, yoga's good. Yoga's really good. So the ball of the foot, the base of the pinky toe, and the center of the heel. Okay, let's start to lift one foot up. And if you are in the morning hours as I am, let's just notice how your balance is. Okay, and then the other side. Okay, now let's start to rotate this leg bone out. And I'm going to start by bringing my foot here to begin. And I'm going to feel the bottom of my foot touching my shin. Yeah. And if we think about how the Earth's energy comes up through our feet, right? And imagine that there's little receptors on our bottom of our feet that are bringing the Earth's energy. And then think about this bottom foot. This is my right leg connecting into that energy coming up through my left. So the sensors are coming and connecting into that shin. And then I can raise that up a little higher and I can do the same thing connecting into ooh, my inner thigh. Okay. Good. And the hands are gonna come here. Okay, now from here, where I wanna spend some thinking time is on the bottom of my foot and on this hip. Okay, so the bottom of my foot on the ground particularly and this hip, okay? And so what's gonna happen here is I'm just gonna place this ankle here and then watch my hips, we're gonna sit, okay? So watch if you wanna do that. I could feel a little swing happening in my hips a bit. Okay, so we're just gonna sit Okay, now from here, this leg is going to come off like that. Good. And then we're going to reach it forward. Now just straighten this leg. Okay. And then we're going to do that again. Rotate pec. This is the this is the primary articulating joint. And the foot and the, well the knee's bending too, but the foot's going to come along for the ride as the knee bends. So the knee and the foot are kind of responsible for this. And so are my arms as I act like a tree. And then we're going to sit. Oops. We're going to sit down. Okay. And then coming up through the hips and then bringing that leg forward. Okay. Okay. Now this time I'm going to actually pay attention to my bottom, my foot here, because I haven't been. And then my breath and feeling the movement of my hips. Good. Now this time, that was three, and then this time I'm going to take this foot back into high lunge. And I'm going to press that heel back. Okay, and then hands are going to start in cowboy surrender, and then they're coming right up to the sky. Yeah. And now for some fun, we're going to come into a little warrior 
three. Now, remember with warrior three that this is a movement around the hips, right? So if you notice that your hips are coming up, you're going too far. Okay, it means that you've lost the stability through your hips or you just don't have the mobility to come around. Okay, so only go down as far as you can without that pelvis. And don't try and like re-square it after you unsquared it because you've already gone too far. Okay, and then come back down to here. Good, and then up, back here, and then start to come through the hips. And then we're gonna come back into tree. And then in standing. Ooh, that was fun. That was fun. Okay, so we're gonna do three of these ones. So first of all, I'm gonna to come to here. You can take the leg right up if that's what your jam is. I'm just gonna connect with that foot. And then I'm gonna bring that hip up. And the foot places. And then can I feel the energy of the earth through my foot? And then through this foot, through that leg. So through the right foot, and then my left foot takes it in through the right leg. So can I feel the earth's energy through my legs? Hmm? All right, so now I'm here. Good, and then we're gonna bring this here, and we're gonna lower into I love losing my balance. Okay, and then up. And I can hear my little twins upstairs. There's nothing like the little three-year-old voices. I, I think I said that when they were two. <laughs> it's so great. All right. Oops. And then here. All right, so now from here, this leg's gonna swing back. Woo. All right. And arms can come up. Cowboy surrender first. Tip ourselves forward, articulating joints, hips, hips, hips. So if you've lost the square, then come back a little bit. Do your body a favor, okay? And then swing forward here, and then here. Wow, well, I'm having trouble with balance today. How about I bring my leg down today? Okay, good. Voila. All right. Now notice what you feel in standing. My legs are feeling a lot longer. That's what I'm noticing. Yeah. Very interesting. Okay, so from here, legs are going to be wide. I'm gonna rotate this leg out. So this is the articulating joint. The foot's going along for the ride. So you'll notice I didn't say move your feet out because I want you to rotate the leg. And then whatever you wanna do with this back leg, your pelvis is likely gonna become more diagonal, but level, it's still level, it hasn't done this. So if this, if when you took yourself out and as you rotated, see sometimes what happens is when we drop that foot, that happens, right? So the foot drops, the, and one of the reasons there's pretty many, is because the, um, the back line of the leg is a little bit limited. Yeah? So what you want to watch for is like, is this. And so you don't want to re, I mean, you could reset, but then you're not fixing the actual issue, right? So what I would do is take your legs a little more narrow and then come into that position and just find the place where you can move your, your limb and your foot without your pelvis going unlevel. Because if you reset, you're just compensating on top of a compensation. Actually, if you knew that I sprained my ankle um, back in January or Feb early February, it wasn't a biggie, but when I was coming into this position, I couldn't, I could not, I had to take my stance really, really short initially. <clears throat> yeah. All right. So 
I'm actually going to take this a little bit longer today. This is actually feeling all right. Okay, so now we're here, and wherever you are, now take this, this hand here on the outside of your thigh, okay, and just feel that. Yeah? And then we're going to go down to the side. And imagine from your armpit right down to the outer side of that foot. So press through that outer side of that foot. And then if you want, you can bring this arm up. And do your best with this bottom hand to keep it like butterfly pressure wherever it's landed. If when you do that, your legs will become a lot stronger, a lot faster. Okay, now this side. Okay, and then come to the side. And you can bring this arm up if you'd like. What you do with your arms is totally up to you. I mean, what you do with your movement is totally up to you too, right? But press if you want. Connect between the armpit and that outside of that foot. Good. All right, and then let's for fun, let's do some triangle. Now, the thing with triangle, what I like to play with triangle, same setup. I'll play like my pelvis came off a bit. Interesting. So you can see that, right? How my pelvis came up a bit, a little bit. Okay. So now think about nose and pubic bone. Right. And so the two are moving at the same rate. Yeah. And just be conscious of your knees hyperextending. Only go as far as that hyperextension doesn't happen. I'm I'm noticing more and more about how mental health and biomechanics are. Um, are highly connected and when we can pay attention to what our function is and move really well um, something something happens and one of the things is we're, as we become more aware of our movement patterns and what's contributing to how we feel physically we can start to notice the things that contribute to how we feel mentally and I've worked with people who come initially to see me for back issues. And then they've also got depression or anxiety or something of that sort. And what they discover around recognizing the yellow lights or the whispers, as I like to talk about them, and their compensation patterns, they begin to see what they're doing related to their mental health. So what they learn from a physical perspective, they can apply to their mental health. And you begin to really see what you're tolerating. So my hand is using butterfly pressure down here, okay? And then we're gonna come up and then come here and then bring the legs together. Okay, so now we're gonna come into a bit of a squat. Mm -hmm. And then you can take your arms forward too if you'd like. So this is the, this is the way I am, right? So my hips and my, my ribs and my pelvis stay as one. And then you can take your hand over and then we can go into a bit of a twist. <clears throat> now, if you'd want, you can always go a little bit lower and move into this if you'd like. But you notice how slowly I moved into it, right? Because so often people, like when they were on the floor, they just kind of move themselves into it. And, but I want you to really think, okay, the articulating joint is here, and then we're moving through here, the ribs, like the torso here into the twist is the articulating joint. So just let wherever you can be, and then your knees will stay even because you haven't done, you haven't done, you haven't done this in order to get yourself into position. So it's, so where I started was we started with the twist and then moving through the hips, I brought myself closer to my thighs, right? And so this is kind of where I'm at right now. And then coming back, and then up, and then coming down. And when you go wherever you want, so maybe you're right here. And then if you want to keep adding more, you can, but just be aware. Be aware. Nice. Okay, and then come back, and then up. All right, let's take the legs wide. And then we're going to rotate and we're just going to drop straight 
down. Hands come on either side. And then feel those feet. Good. And then come back. All right. So now here we are. Feet, legs, pelvis, torso, ribs. And just check in. If you've been following along with me, just check in. And let's take the arms up overhead. Inhale. And then exhale. And then inhale. And then exhale. And then inhale. And then exhale. And let's, for good measure, take our fist and start to move through the ribs. Help bring in some space for some breathing. shoulders up and then roll them back and then down. Raise the shoulders up and then back and down. Raise them up, back and down. Okay, so that is going to be the finishing of my part of this. You carry on doing what you need to do to help bring completion or continuity to this practice. And I will see you perhaps tomorrow. Take good care. Namaste. Have a great day. Mm.